So I tried very hard, but I couldn't work properly, and they put me on a siding. I stayed there for days and days. Other engines were there too. I was afraid. I'd have been frightened too, said Edward. But then some workmen came, they mended me, and even gave me a coat of paint. I couldn't understand it till my driver came. He was very pleased. Stepney, you lucky old engine, he said, you've been saved. The Bluebell Railway has bought you. What a lovely surprise, smiled Edward. Have they saved other engines besides you, he asked. Oh, yes, answered Stepney. You'd like our Bluebell and Primrose. They're twins, he chuckled, and it's like as two peas. They only had numbers at first. Bluebell is 323 and Primrose is 27. They were very pleased when our controller gave them names. Some say he was wrong to do it. It certainly made them cocky, but they do work hard, and I think our controller was right. All engines ought to have names. Yes, agreed Edward. It's most important. That's why, Stepney continued, we've given names to our 488 and 2650. But our controller doesn't know. It's a secret. Don't tell him, will you? Of course not, smiled Edward. They're both very pleased about it, because now they feel part of the family. We call 488 Adams after his designer, you know. He's a lovely engine, a southwestern from Devon. He can stroll away with any load he's given. Cromford, who's 2650, has been pulling trucks up high peaks in Derbyshire. He's tough as Cromford. He had to be for that job. Captain Baxter's tough too, Stepney went on. And uh, rather rude, but he's worked in a quarry and you know what that does to an engine's language and manners. I do indeed, said Edward gravely. He's a good sort, really, said Stepney. I like him. We both miss our work with trucks. He paused. I oughtn't to say this, he went on, after everyone's been so kind. But our line is very short. I never get any good runs now. I miss them dreadfully. Never mind, smiled Edward. Perhaps you'll get some while you're here. Stepney said goodbye to Edward and then returned to the big station. There he helped Duck shunt the yard. They were soon great friends and enjoyed their afternoon together. Thomas arrived before they'd finished and stayed till it was time for his last branch line train. But that train's tail lamps were hardly out of sight when the two engines heard a commotion at the station. Hello, said Duck. I wonder what's up. Presently, the night duty shunter came hurrying to the shed. The bell in the cabin on the branch line rang once, then five, pause five. That means shunt to allow following train to pass. The signalman was puzzled. He telephoned control. Oh, a special, is it? Ah, I see. Thomas and his passengers grumbled at being delayed, but there was no help for it. Soon they heard an unfamiliar puffing. Express headlamps swayed and twinkled. Then Stepney, pulling one coach, loomed in the station lights. He slowed to exchange tablets, whistled a greeting, then gathered speed into the night. Well, bust my boiler! said Thomas, the tank engine. Shunted, fumed Thomas next morning. On my own branch, too. It's a disgrace. I'm sorry, said Stepney. I was a special, he explained. Why? An important passenger came after you'd gone. He said he must get home and ordered a special. Duck kindly let me take it. We had a splendid run. No record-breaking, of course, but... Uh, Ah, well, said Thomas modestly. Perhaps when you know the road as I do. Exactly, put in Stepney. You're such an expert. Thomas, flattered, forgot he was cross. 
and told Stepney all about his branch line. <laughs>